Let me see. Detective Sidner's ensemble is the latest in West Side Project Web. Have your torn camis by Versace. The stained sweatshirt by Ralph Lauren. And here we go. It's Power 1051. Home of the Breakfast Club, Angie Martinez, and that hip hop and RB. It's your main man, and Easy, with another edition of the Sunday Sit Down. And this afternoon, I have a very accomplished actor sitting across from me. I was a big fan of The Wire. My mom is probably going to be very happy guiding light in the building. My man, Corey Parker Robinson. What's up? Hey, man. How you doing, man? How you Thank been? you for having me. I've been, I've been Thank, well. Thanks for coming. How you been? I've been good, man. I've been good. What I you think? working on? Uh, actually, um, I'm actually gotten into producing films. So Ooh. I've been uh, working on this project for about eight months now. This film called uh, Donnie Brook. We're tentatively set to start shooting in May of 2016. And uh, now we're just working out all the deals with distribution companies and all the political whatever money stuff. So Got you. Now, stress. Is, is, <laughs> trust me, I can understand that. Um... Now, is is being a producer a natural progression for actors? Because I, I sit and talk to a lot of actors, and a lot of them get into production and things afterwards. Well, not afterwards, but during their whole acting career. Is that like a natural progression to get into production? Well, I don't know. I mean, for me it was. Uh, you know, once you're around long enough and you've done enough stuff, you realize that uh, that's where the true control is. Yes. Okay. So... For me, it was a natural progression. Okay. I don't know about other actors. You know, oh, cool. I've talked to several actors who are just like, "Look, man, I don't like to be the chef. I just like to eat the food." So I'm like, "All right, well, you know, if that's good for you." Got you. Now, um, you got. How did you get your start? Let them know how they got how you got your start because I have it here in front of me, but I want to make sure I'm not giving the people wrong information. New York Undercover was your first thing. Yeah, that's how I got my SAG card, man. Now, but now, how did they find you for that? I just uh, got an agent and uh, went in, auditioned, and um, got the job. Got you. So now you're you're a DC. Um, you yes, born I am. From, from DC, DC, right? Yeah, man. In the Wire was that? Wait, did see? I get excited when I talk about the Wire because that was a show I watched a lot. Whereas, were you because you were from DC? Was that something that connected to you? Was that for that role? No, because it was it was actually shot in Baltimore. It was about the whole Baltimore gotcha. thing. DC and Baltimore are like two different worlds. Man. Really? Yeah. See, I'm thinking the whole DM the Ooh, DMV areas. No, no, no. Nah. No, it's different, man. It's different. Explain. Well, in Baltimore, it's just uh Well, see, DC is an international city. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Baltimore is just a northern Maryland city. Gotcha. So, that changes everything. You know, the culture is totally different. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just, that aspect of it changes everything. You know, it's a bunch of diplomats in D.C., mm -hmm. politics, mm -hmm. you know. It's just, you know, it's just different, that's all. Gotcha. Now, now in your travels as an actor, give me one role that people know you from. Like, you walk the street and be like, oh, you're the guy from... The Wire. There it goes. I <laughs> am The Wire. Detective Sidnor. Oh. Is it hard for you to shake those roles? Nah, man. Do, no. do you want to? Uh, not exactly. No. Um, you know, a lot of actors get into all that stuff about, well, you know, I want to be versatile and, you know, it's about doing this and doing that. To be honest with you, in my, and this is just my opinion as an actor, um, it's all about typecasting. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I mean, I know people say, look, you know, you should be able to do A, B, or C, but you have very few actors in this business who could do everything. If you're good at something, then do that. Mm -hmm. What difference does it make? And then get to a point where, you know, you could do what I'm doing, where you could produce, and then you could put yourself in something that's totally different. But as far as typecast, I mean, you know, that's just how people are. That's the way the world is, you know? Yeah. You walk down the street, you know, you're doing something, you're looking a certain way, then that's what they think you are. So do you think you, you felt you've been typecast at all? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm always the young detective. Yes. But, but it doesn't bother me. I don't mind. You know? I mean, it, it, it's a check, right? It's a check, bro. That's what I say. It's there a check. It and it's just another opportunity to do work, to get out there, for people to see you, and, you know, another feather in your cap, man. Did, did you always know you wanted to be an actor? No. When did the acting I, bug hit you? Senior year of high school. Okay. Senior year How? of high school. What, um, what did you stumble upon that made you say, you know what, maybe this is the direction I need to go? Okay, I'm in D.C. It's my senior year. My brother, 
he um, they had an open call for Spike Lee's movie Crooklyn. Okay. Right, and uh, they were having they were having open casting calls down at uh, this uh, performing arts school in D.C. called Duke Ellington. Okay. And so uh, you know Spike was down there, and his casting director was down there, and then I went in. You know, my um, brother said, "Yo, man, why don't you try it?" So I went in there, went into the audition, and I almost fainted, man. <laughs> why? Nervous? Yeah. Okay. Are you kidding, man? All I was seeing was white spots and everything. <laughs> and then the um, casting director was like, are you okay? You're racing and you're sweating. Do you want some water? And I was like, huh? <laughs> and then after that, I was like, you know what? I want to learn how to master that. And then um, graduated from high school, saved up some money, moved to New York about a year later. And the rest is history. And the rest is history, man. <clears throat> That's a dope story. Because, I mean, they said they, fought, they have in front of me, they said you were spotted in a play. No, no. I did a play. Uh -huh. uh, the uh, first audition I ever had in New York was for this play called The Amen Corner, James Baldwin. And, um, you know, I got my agent, and then my agent sent me on this audition over at, uh, what is that, McCorkle Casting. Okay. And it was at the uh, Crossroads Theater Company in uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey. And I went in, auditioned, and they were like, we want you to play the role of David, so... Went in and then I did that. After I finished that, that's when I got my first TV audition for New York Undercover. Mm -hmm. So, no, I mean, I wasn't spotted in a play, okay. but, you know. Got you, got you. Just like I said, I want to make sure I got the right information in front of me before I say what I say. Now, um, let's, what do you do in your downtime when you're not producing shows or acting or anything else? What, is, what does Corey do on his downtime? Man, I hang out with my wife and my son. I mean, I don't have much downtime, but when I do, man, you got to do the fam, so... How old's your son? Six years old, man. Oh, I just uh, minus seven, seven Ooh, months. Man. So I'm, I'm, I seven actually. Seven months? Yes. You sleeping? <laughs> no? I just, he's just starting to sleep through the night. Yeah. Now. <laughs> man, I listen. You're lucky, man. Mine took about a year. Before he started sleeping through the night? Oh, yeah, man. Oh. Me and my wife were on shifts, man. It's rough. Yes, we, I mean, he doesn't sleep through the night all the time, but when he does, it's, it's definitely a plus. Well, when he gets older, man, he'll be good. Yeah. So besides for the, the, the project you're working on, any other things that we can speak of in the works for Corey? You know, just um, auditioning. Um, about, a, about a month ago, I did a guest starring spot on uh, this show, Unforgettable. I don't know when that's airing. I think, it, I think it aired in October. It might be this month, November. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, other than that, man, I've just been killing this producing thing, man. It's been taking up a lot of my time. Got you. So what inspires you? When you're thinking about writing a, 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 a script or, or, or putting together a production, what inspires you? What, what makes, what clicks into Corey's mind? I was like, you know what, I want to put this together. So you're talking about as far as producing? Production, yeah, production. Okay, now this is just my opinion, all just right? Just you, go ahead. I gotta, I gotta tell you, as far as I'm concerned, um, the first thing that you have to do is you have to get the right actors in the right roles. I mean, okay. that's key. So much is casting. Um, then after casting, you gotta get the right crew together. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, um, for uh, Donnie Brook, we put a crew together that is, because it's an independent film, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we needed a crew that was a TV crew because TV is quick and it's fast and it's efficient. You know what I mean? You're not spending 45 minutes to have one lighting set up. You know what I mean? Gotcha. 15 minutes or less, man, get it lit, get it in there, let's shoot it, and let's go on. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So, you know, that was key. Um, and that's just an example of, you mm. know, First cast, then crew, um, and then, uh, well, of course, you got to start with a good production team. And, you know, I was very fortunate to be brought in, and this production team is very good because they know that uh, the people that they need to bring on are people that experience, that are um, people that are experienced in the industry as far as, you know, acting and things like that. Because this particular film is a very character-driven piece, you know what I mean? Okay. We don't have a lot of bells and whistles, and you know, it's not Independence Day, mm -hmm. you know, with all that special effects stuff. You know, this, you know, this is a gritty Bronx, New York tale. So, God, what's it? What's it about? Okay, it's about um, <clears throat> it's about it's about this um, Afghan war veteran. He comes back from Afghanistan, and uh, he's suffering from PTSD. So then, um, give me give, give me the the full name, post. Oh, post traumatic uh, uh, post traumatic stress syndrome. Okay, Excuse just me. Just for the listeners. I'm sorry. All right, 
And so, uh, you know what I mean? He's dealing with that, and then he comes back, and his problem is he keeps experiencing this thing called berserker rage. It's where these guys come back from war, and just the littlest thing will just tick them off, and they'll just start being violent and doing crazy stuff. And so he goes to his local bar in the Bronx where he's from and everything, and this guy just ticks him off at the bar, and he puts the dude in the, uh, in the um, hospital. So then after he puts him in the um, hospital, the um, local mob uh, boss comes to him, and then he's like, look, man, you know, this guy you put in the hospital, and we appreciate your whole, you know what I mean, how you went and you served and everything, but um, that guy was deeply involved with me in this underground fight club. Oh, so okay. here's what has to happen. Now it's your job. Oh, oh, so they didn't... They didn't get rid of him. They hired him. Like, you're taking yeah. over the guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, All right. And so he has to go in and he has to deal with this along with his PTSD and trying to come out clean at the end so he can get away and get out from under this guy. Is it done yet? No, 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 no. no. Minutes are done. I want to see it. You already got me hooked. Oh, man. It's an incredible story. Um, We are tentatively sh set to shoot in May of 2016. Okay, so you, so you're on production, not sh you're about to shoot, is what you're saying? Yeah, May gotcha. 2016. Got gotcha. you. And what's the name of it? Donnie Brook. Donnie Brook. I'll make make sure we pay attention for that because I want to see how that works out. Yeah, man. man. We got some uh, great actors in it. And everything's good. So now, were you in the or uh, Orange Is the New Black? Yes, yes, I was. How was it being on set with all those jail women, quote unquote? It was cool. You know, I enjoyed it. Um, that woman, uh, Flocka. That's who I had most of my scenes with. Gotcha. She's a nice girl. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for coming through, man. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate, man. I appreciate you. It. I'll be looking out for uh, what is it called? Donnie Brook. Donnie Brook. Got you. I uh, appreciate you for coming by. Next time you get some free time, we need to chop it up. I do these these uh, these restaurant critiques. I call it Easy Eats, where we go into restaurants and have food. If you're in town one time, you're not doing nothing. Bring the wife out, bring the son. Have a couple bites to eat, critiques Absolutely, food. Absolutely, man. Okay. Cool? Yeah, let me know. Just, I'm answering oh, no, my phone. Listen, we going to use you. All right. My God. Corey Robinson Parker in the building. The Sunday sit down. Appreciate you for coming through, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. My God. Another example of how easy does it. Yes. 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 Y